will find the schedule for Christmas Eve um, on page 9. So we'll have a 5, 7, and 10 o'clock service. Um, the 5 o'clock service will be the youth chimes and special music. So that usually is the fullest service. Okay, so if you're planning your, your Christmas Eve and you're not sure which service you're going to come to, just know that the 5 o'clock is usually the fullest. 7 o'clock is the adult choir and the adult hand chimes. And then 10 o'clock will be special music. So all of the services are the same as far as the liturgy and the hymns and the sermon and all of that. The only difference is which choir is going to be singing. So 5 o'clock is the youth, 7 o'clock is the adult, and 10 o'clock will just have special music with soloists and, and things like that. So they all have special music in them. It's just a matter of which ones. We also have a Christmas Day service. Um, that is at 9 o'clock on Christmas Day, which is Saturday. Um, that service is a communion service. Um, it is a, uh, a shorter service. It's about a, a half an hour, 35 minutes. Um, it is a very low-key service. We have people who actually come in their pajamas um, because they've opened their presents and they're here and, and they don't want to get dressed yet, you know, for the family and, and they want to, you know, come to church. So they do come in their pajamas. But if you're, you know, if you're one that kind of lounges around on Christmas after presents are over and whatnot, you know, in your sweatpants or whatever, feel free to come. Um, in, in whatever attire you want to come. Um, this Friday, for those of you, I'm kind of looking around, uh, that have kids in elementary school, is um, this Friday is elementary youth group. We switched it from um, this past Friday to, to this coming Friday. Um, and uh, Lisa Gutshaw will be here. She'll be doing crafts and, and uh, different Christmas things. So if you have any kids, grandkids, neighborhood kids that you really like, um, tell them about youth group and elementary youth group. It's from kindergarten through sixth grade, and it's here at Trinity Hall from 6 to 7.30 on Friday. Let us read together Mark 12, 28 to 31. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your strength, love your neighbor as yourself. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. I invite you to please rise for the reading of our gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Eritrea and Trachonicus, and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A visitor to a museum was admiring the Tyrannosaurus Rex fossil. And he asked a nearby museum employee how old the fossil was. Well, the fossil is 
three years, two months, and 18 days old. Well, the visitor was taken aback at how precise the museum worker was and, and said, how in the world can you be so precise to know that it's 65 million, three years, two months, and 18 days old? And the employee said, well, when I started working here, I asked the museum scientist how old the T-Rex fossil was, and he said it was 65 million years old. And I've been here three years, two months, and 18 days. <laughs> Sounds like pretty good math to me. In the 15th year, of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Eritrea and Trachonicus, and Licinius, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. That's pretty precise. Our gospel lesson from Luke pointed out just exactly when John the Baptist came on the scene. And the thing that struck me the most about this reading for today was exactly that, how precise Luke is in his writing. He tells us exactly who was in power, not only politically, but also in the church. Because back in those days, whoever was ruler of the church, of the synagogue, of the temple, was almost on a parallel line of authority with the political rulers. And so he painstakingly points out exactly who is in power at the time. And I was thinking about this concept of being precise and to the point. And I look at John the Baptist, and we meet John the Baptist twice in the Advent season, and we meet John the Baptist every year. We all pretty much know all about John the Baptist. But I was looking at John the Baptist from this role of being precise and to the point. John the Baptist went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. How, what does that have to do with being precise? What does that have to do with Advent? What does that have to do with the coming of Jesus. Well, I think one of the things that it spoke to me was that as we are repentant of our sins, we are called to be precise in our conversations with God and Jesus. Now, some of us are really good at being precise when it comes to getting ready for Christmas. My mother is very precise about where each ornament goes on the Christmas tree. Unlike me, I have a half-decorated tree. She's also very precise about the turkey that she picks out and about making sure that everything is falling into place for Christmas dinner. I call it OCD. She calls it being precise. So some of us are pretty good at being precise about the, the steps we take to prepare for Christmas. But the Advent season reminds us that we are called to prepare for the second coming of Christ. And how we do that is through the repentance of our sins. And I think we are called to be precise in that matter as well. We don't simply go to God and say, hey, forgive me of all my sins. No, we're precise. We say, God, please forgive me for, for passing off store-bought cookies as homemade cookies. I'm not saying who would do that. We're precise. In our worship every Sunday, 
We have the confession of sins, right? Remember this? We just did it about 10 minutes ago. And every week we have this, um, for example, let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and neighbor. And then in italicized writing, it says, silence for reflection and self-examination. And we gloss right over that. Some of the reason for that is because I don't like silence in the service. It makes people think I've forgotten my place. Some of it is I'm just so conditioned that we go straight on then until to the confession. But I think during this Advent season, we need to go back to that time of silence for reflection and self-examination. That we don't just blanket our sins, but we go precisely to Christ and say, Lord, please forgive me of these specific sins. Not to make ourselves feel bad, not to point out what horrible people we might be, not to make ourselves worried with guilt that we've committed these sins, but so that we can have a full relationship with Christ. Because Jesus precisely forgives us of each of our sins. And so the more intimate we can be in our relationship with Jesus, the more we can turn to him and say, Lord, I did commit these sins. Lord, these are the places I have fallen short. Lord, this is exactly where I made my mistake. We can hear even more resolutely God's I love you I forgive you, you are set free from the bondage of sin. Sometimes, when we're looking at John the Baptist, we kind of gloss over him. Yeah, yeah, that's that crazy man eating wild locusts and honey and wearing a, I don't know, bearskin suit, whatever he wears. But John reminds us that part of our relationship with Jesus Christ is that repentance of sins. John reminds us that none of us are perfect. But John also reminds us that we call for that repentance. Why? Because we have the forgiveness that goes with it. God was precise when he sent his son Jesus down to earth to suffer and die for each one of us. And so we are called to remember those sins. We might not be so precise that we can remember the exact day and time and moment, but we can go to God and can say, instead of just blankly blanketing, oh, just forgive me all my sins. We can say, no, Jesus, this is exactly what I did wrong. This is exactly where I fell short. This is exactly what I need forgiveness for. And Jesus will say, you are forgiven. You are loved. And you are mine. Amen.